Welcome to another episode of Intermediate Financial Accounting 2's Our Community Counts. In this episode, we're going to be relating the material to deferred tax. We score above Canadian demographics in a number of areas, including gender diversity. Half of our people leaders are women, an achievement that earned us recognition by McKinsey and Company as a leader in gender diversity in the workplace. While we take pride in our achievements to date, we also recognize that more needs to be done, including with respect to Indigenous people and visible minorities. This is a quote from the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation's 2019 annual report. It's worth highlighting because typically these quotes about the company's diversity and inclusion initiatives in an annual report do not recognize the need to improve even further, which is what's being done here. The Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation is a Canadian crown corporation that fulfills numerous public functions, including providing mortgage liquidity to the market, assisting in developing affordable housing, and offering advice to the federal government related to housing concerns that concern Canadians. The organization has established a National Committee on Mental Health and Wellness. This recognizes that mental health is often an invisible source of disadvantage that can place employees at a disadvantage when considering retention or promotions. The company also encourages the use of both official languages in the workplace, English and French, and additionally has ensured their newest office was constructed with universal accessibility principles in mind. The company itself maintains deferred income tax positions on its financial statements as it is required to. This begs the question, how can user-centric design thinking be applied regularly to ensure that new products and places remain accessible to all people? The basic idea is, is that if you've satisfied the needs of people appearing at both extremes of the spectrum, then you've probably satisfied the requirements of a person in the middle. For example, the divots in concrete sidewalks are created for accessibility for wheelchair users, but they will work regularly for able-bodied individuals as well. How can these principles be applied all the time to ensure that all products and places remain accessible to all people? If you'd like to know a little bit more about the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation and its efforts in diversity and inclusion, the link to their website is included here.